Hello hackers, welcome to the new challenge where we are going to hack cross-site WebSocket hijacking lab from Web Security Academy that powered by Portswicker. In this lab, we have online shop that has a live chat feature implemented using WebSocket. And to solve the lab, all what we have to do is to send a vulnerable page to the victim, contain it a JavaScript code, and that's what we call it CSRF attack based to WebSocket. In other words, we also call it cross-site WebSocket hijacking attack. Before moving forward, guys, one of the requirements that you have to use a Perpsuit Professional Edition in case that we are going to use one of the Perpsuit features, call it Perpsuit collaborator. And here we go guys, without further ado, let's hack. And uh, here we go guys, so the first step, let me activate Foxy Proxy. I'm using Professional Edition. Then let's go to the proxy, introspect, and click to introspect wise. Then let's go to HTTP history in here. Then let me go to the live chat. And here we go. Now you can see we have some requests in here. And now let me connect with a helpline and let's say, hello, I am PopoHack. And let me send a request. And here we go. So now let me go to the WebSocket history and let me see what I have in here. So as you can see, we have different lanterns in here and we have the shortest one with a five and it's the first one. So as you can see, we have this ready message. So this is a very important step that tell me now I'm ready to connect with the server in the real time and this is what we call it the hand check. So now let me see the next request from the server to me and as you can see we have the user call it connected so this is definitely not a real user so this is the server and he sent me now chatting with the helpline which is the first message in here and as you can see we have the user call it connected. Then let me see the second request and as you can see this message came from my side to the server with a hello I'm Popo and then it's back to me with the user called you which is me and then I get the response from the helpline which is go on ask me another. And here we go let me ask him another question let me say how are you and let me see. And here we go, so I don't care about his response in here, but what I'm really caring here, if I do refresh this page in here, what just happened? And here we go guys, now you can see I'm able to see the previous messages, and now I'm connecting again, which I can see it in here that ready for one more time. So this is very important step, let me just color it with a red color. And here we go, now we have these requests responsible for these returns. But there is a very important question here. How the server knows that these messages are related to me? So let me just back to the HTTP history to answer this question. Let me go to the first chat in here and let me just make it more big. Now you can see in here we have this cookie session that already registered when I open this lab. So when I go in here and I see my session cookie, I think this one is responsible to recognize me and to recognize what are the messages that I have in the database. So to verify this answer, let me just delete this section in here and let me try to refresh the page and see what happened. Now you can see that my old messages are disappeared and if I go to the web socket you will see that I'm connecting for one more time but in this time with a different cookie session let me just check it in here and as you can see now I do have a new session in here let me send a new message and let me say hi and let me send and here we go now let me back to my HTTP history and let me reuse this section so let me copy it let me just refresh in here to verify this point. And here we go, now I'm able to see a high message. So now let me change my current session with the previous one. Let me just paste it in here and let me save. And here we go, now let me refresh again and see what happened. 
And here we go. Now I'm able to see my previous messages. And now this is a very important point to me as a hacker to know that this system is not very secure because he's based his live chat identity or user identity just with the session cookie. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to target this session cookie to my victim and I will be use his session to get his private messages. So to do this, let's go to my VS code in here. So this is my default code editor and let me start to make the attack. So let's say HTML5 in here and here we go. Now I'm going to create a malicious web page. Let me say in here h1 hello I am popo hack then let me close the tag and in here I'm going to send him a malicious script code and here we go. Before moving forward with this payload, let me show you something very interesting. Let's back to the lab. Let me open the developer mode and now let me go to the form in here. And as you can see in this form, we have a very interesting information. The action in here is using a secure WebSocket. So this is the endpoint which I'm going to target. And in here you can see that there is a hidden JavaScript file. So let's click control and click on it. And here we go. Now let me make it more bigger so you can see. And here we go guys. So now I'm going to use the same code in here to base it my attack. So let me just put this on the right side so we can see what I'm going to do. Now you can see in here we have WebSocket, then we have a new WebSocket. So let me just copy it and let me paste it in here. And in here we have a shut form get attribute action, which is the action of the form. So let's back in here to the code. So as you can see, this is the chat form and this is its action. So let me just copy it in here. Here we go. Now let me replace this one and let me back to the debugger and here we go now what i need i need this on open listener and on message listener let me just copy this one and here we go now let me paste it in here okay so in case that i don't need to write any messages in here i don't need to do anything but I still need to send this ready to verify that I'm already connected with the server. So let me back to the perp suite and show you it. Let's go to the WebSocket history. So this is absolutely the same as this request, which returned me ready in here. So now let me go to the lab and here we go. Now let me take the another listener. Let me just copy this one and let me paste it in here and let me close this function so in case that i don't need these details in here i just need this variable now each of these function returns an event in here which means whatever the user going to communicate with the server where i will be able to read the content of these messages so i will spy on him and here we go now i'm ready to make the attack but first let me go to the my perp suit and let me go to the collaborator in here and let me continue what I'm doing. And now on the message listener, let me send the request to my private server. So I'm going to use a fetch method. Then I'm going to use HTTPS protocol. And here we go. Now let me go to the my collaborator and in case that this feature is only implemented in the professional edition so you have to use a perp suit professional edition then i'm going to click get start and here we go let me copy my clipboard and let me paste it in here and here we go so in case that i'm not able to read any response i'm going to base my attack with a request so let me add a new attribute in here so the method is going to be post method in case that I'm going to return a message in the body. So let's say body and I'm going to return the message variable. And now we have a mode equal to no course. And here we go, guys. Now my vulnerable web page is ready for the attack. So let me copy it. Let's say control A, control Z. Let me back to the lab. And here we go. Let me put it on the left side. And here we go. Let me close the developer tool. 
and let me go to the exploit server in here. So let me open it on the new angle and here we go. Now let me paste my code over here. Let's store it. And now let me send it to the victim. And here we go. Now let me pull and see. And here we go guys. Now we have a response from my target to my server. So in case that I don't care about the DNS protocol, I only care about the HTTPs. And here we go, let me check them one by one. So let me click to the first one. And before moving to the request, let me show you the response. And as you can see, we don't have something interesting and all the responses and the other requests aren't important. So in this case, I'm going to focus on the request. And here we go. Now, as you can see, we have this post method and let me check its body. And here we go. Now we have the user equal to you. So I still, I don't know who is the user. And we have this content message. We have thanks. I hope that doesn't come back to pipe me. Let me go to the next one and see. And here we go. Now we have the connect user in here, which is the server. Let me see the next one. And here we go. Now we have the helpline, which is the server responsible. We have hello, how I can help you. Now let me see the next one. Now we have a response for a helpline. He said that no problem, Carlos. We have this random character in here and another random character in here. And let me see the last one and see. And here we go. Now my target is asked that he forgets his password. So definitely he has a response from the helpline, which is this message. So let me just copy it from here. And let me go to the decoder. Let me paste it. And in case that we have this encoded value, which is by default HTML encoding. So let me just decode it to the HTML and see. And here we go. Now we have no problem, Carlos. And it's this random character, which means this is the username and this is the password. So let me back to the lab and let me try to connect using his credential. So let's go to my account. Let me copy paste the credentials from here. And now let me copy the password. And let me send the request. And here we go guys, now we finally hack the Carlos account. So I hope that you learned how to make CSRF attack based to the WebSocket and that what we call it cross-site WebSocket hijacking. And I hope that you learned how to write your own payload basic on the code that already exists in the lab. And guys, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and if you have any question or need any help, please put it on the comment below and stay tuned for the next videos.